Uh, the evolution of healthcare and medical technologies has significantly improved health and well-being and reduced suffering and death over the years. Ailments like HIV and AIDS, whose diagnosis would have been equivalent to a death sentence, are no longer very detrimental to both individual and public health, all thanks to the advent of antiretroviral drugs. This expansion in the size of the health program has also engendered a more complex and dynamic medical logistics program, which continuously strives to ensure quality products reach the patients in time. And in today's session, we shall break down some of the fundamental principles of logistics and supply chain management, especially in the context of public health programs. Logistics management is the operational component of supply chain management that has to do with the effective planning, control, and the implementation of the movement of goods. While supply chain encompasses processes and systems that ensure products get from point A to the manufacturer to point B, the patient. Logistics management is pivotal to the success of multiple public health programs including but not limited to programs for the diagnosis, prevention and treatment of HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and COVID-19. The logistics management cycle starts with the process of medicine selection. Selection involves constructing a list of medicines and other health supplies that meet the priority healthcare needs of the population. Typically, Medicines are selected based on recommendations from standard treatment guidelines and essential medicines lists. Opinions and recommendations of experts are also taken into account. The next step in the logistics management cycle is quantification and forecasting. In this step, very specific scientific methods are applied to determine the quantities of medicines and health supplies that are needed for programs and patients. It might answer questions like, how much paracetamol do we need for a circumcision program? How much anti-malaria shall we need for a malaria treatment program? Literature recognizes four methods of quantification, and these include the consumption method, the morbidity method, proxy consumption technique, and finally, the service level projection of budget requirements. Types of data required for the methods are historical consumption, services data, comparison to standard systems, and unit cost of service per patient. Moving on, the next step in the logistics management cycle is procurement. Procurement is not merely purchasing a quality product, but doing so for the best possible price. One million US dollars is certainly a lot of money, but would you argue that it is money well spent when purchasing a luxurious and very rare Aston Martin performance car? Another critical step in the logistics management cycle is distribution. Distribution largely encompasses the safe transportation of goods from their source to the requesting party, which could be a national medical stores or it could be a health facility. When medicines and other health supplies eventually reach the central warehouses, they must first be temporarily stored before they are dispatched to final users. Principles of inventory management must therefore be implemented to ensure that these commodities remain viable during storage. Specifics of inventory management will include warehousing, the principle of fast expiry, fast out, fast in, fast out, and good security. Finally, when the products reach the service points, they must be used to treat ailments when health workers dispense these commodities to patients at the various service delivery points. The service delivery points may include maternal and child clinic, outpatient department, and the inpatient department. All of this goes without saying that data must be routinely captured 
and used in the program for the purposes of planning. The logistics management cycle should also incorporate various monitoring and evaluation functions and quality assurance to ensure that each of the processes are delivering outputs as per the prescribed indicators. When all the aforementioned are done right, we can expect good patient care and good health outcomes. We can also expect better prevention services and the success of health programs. Good logistics management should culminate in the availability of adequate quantities of medicines. If the cycle is not implemented rightly, there will be no medicines and ultimately the programs will not succeed. Thank you so very much for your attention and see you on the next video. Thank you.